In this episode, we're going to talk about an investment strategy that we're exploring. It uses the Schiller Cape ratio to determine how much to put into stocks versus bonds and uses the Morningstar fair market value to find undervalued stocks. This is AAO Financial with Bill Holiday. We discuss financial planning issues, investments, taxes, estate planning, insurance, retirement planning. It's brought to you by AIO Financial. We're a fee-only fiduciary financial planning firm with clients located all over the U.S. You can find more about us at AIOfinancial.com. Thank you for joining me on this episode. I am filming from our home in Hermosillo, Mexico. So you may hear sounds that we normally don't have in the office, including kids. The Cape Stock Investment Strategy. This strategy is presented for informational use only. We're not making an investment recommendation. This isn't appropriate for anyone. As with any investment strategy, please discuss it with your financial advisor to see if any part of it's appropriate. So this strategy does not consider your age, your risk tolerance, your cash needs, your RMD distributions, tax consequences. I'm not looking for an investment strategy or a comprehensive portfolio. I'm looking for just one portion of your portfolio, maybe one IRA or a Roth as part of a comprehensive plan, but we're trying to be as efficient as we can or as get the best returns we can with that one account. We do monthly trading in the strategy which could have considerable tax consequences, capital gains. So I'd recommend using a, an IRA or a Roth account for this. The purpose is to give direction that's not biased or influenced by the news, just that's reported by this CAPE index that we'll go over, but give you some direction as to the stock bond balance that makes the most sense. And it looks at how expensive the market is at any given time, if it's undervalued, overvalued, or properly valued. And that will drive how much you have in stocks versus bonds. Some of the best returns are, are received when you have undervalued the stock market, when it's gone down considerably, and then you're heavily investing in the market at that. The, the strategy will sell when the market's high, buy when the market's low and do some shifting there. The equity portion of the portfolio could easily be covered with just exchange traded funds. We're gonna try to outperform the index just for US, the US large cap portion of the portfolio. We're picking 10 undervalued stocks in various industries to make up that US equity portion of the portfolio, US large cap. Unlike the remainder of the portfolio, we're gonna be selling and buying these holdings or changing these holdings regularly. So let's talk about the stock bond ratio. The cyclically adjusted price earning ratio, the CAPE ratio of the stock market. It's a standard matri metric to use to evaluate if the market's overvalued, undervalued, or fairly valued. And it was developed by Robert Schiller. That's why it's called the Schiller Index. It was popularized during the dot-com bubble. He correctly argued that the market was highly overvalued and it's referred to as the Schiller P.E. ratio they, they use, and that's uh, the price versus the 10-year earnings of an index. And it can be applied to an individual stock or different indexes. It's commonly applied to the S&P 500, and that's what we're going to use. Now, we're using the cyclically adjusted P.E., uh, which is slightly different, but that's what we're going to use to determine how, how overpriced, how valued, highly valued or undervalued the stock market is. So the 10 year average for this CAPE ratio is about 27, the mean 26, the 10 year max is 13, minimum is 13 the maximum is 44. 13 to 44 is the range we've seen in the last 10 years the 100 year average is 17.6 so considerably lower than what we've seen in the last 10 years the standard deviation is about 6.3 so currently december 2019 the cape ratio is 33.6 so it's high compared to the 100 or the 10 year average, uh, but it's not near the maximum of 44, uh, and it has trended higher over time. So we break down what percentage you should have in stocks and bonds based on that CAPE ratio. If that ratio 
is under 15, we want 90% in stocks, 10% in bonds. If it's between 15 and 20, we want 80% in stocks, 20% in bonds. And we move up currently with the market at, sorry, with the CAPE ratio at 34. Between 30 and 35, we want a 50-50 balance. And if that CAPE ratio is over 45, we want 10% in stocks, 90% in bonds. So you can see as that CAPE ratio goes up, we want more in bonds. As the CAPE ratio goes down, we want more in stocks. I do have a graph showing how that CAPE ratio is adjusted or how it has how it has changed over time. And you'll see that it does track with ups and downs in the market. Most of the portfolios is handled using exchange traded funds, ETFs. An ETF is a basket of securities, stocks, bonds, commodities, or some mix of that. That's traded on the exchange like a stock. The ETF values fluctuate all day. They could be bought and sold at any time during the day while the market's open. Unlike a mutual fund that's traded after the market closes. In ETF, the expense ratio, that ongoing cost for it, is generally low compared to mutual funds. It's not actively managed, or most of them are not actively managed. They're generally tracking an index, and that keeps it really low. I mean, less than a tenth of a percent. They can be really low, those uh, expenses on ETFs. Most of the portfolio or of this account, we're going to use ETFs. Once we have the amount we want in stocks and the amount we want in bonds, we break it up. The bond portion, we want some in short term bond ETFs, intermediate term bond ETF, and a long term bond ETF. And we use mid to high quality bond funds. On the equity side, we want some, we're using 17% in international developed stocks, 17% international emerging stocks, 7% in small cap US, 7% in mid cap US, and about 53% of the equity portfolio in US stock, large US stock. So half of the equities are gonna be in large US stock, half of the equities are gonna be in exchange traded funds, and then all of the bonds we're using exchange traded funds. They're easy to rebalance. We can see how they're doing versus versus that, that index and then see how they're doing versus uh, the, the investment goal. And we'll be buying and selling each of those each month. The purpose is to have a diversified bond and stock portfolio. And we're gonna take advantage of the movements. The more volatile, actually, the better we're gonna do because things are not gonna be moving together. We use SRI, Sustainable Responsible Impact Investing Exchange Traded Funds. SRI funds or SRI investing is important to a majority of our clients and to myself, so that's what we're using. Uh, instead of just a standard fund, we'll be avoiding fossil fuels, we'll be avoiding weapons, global bank. I mean, there's gonna be some areas that we're not gonna have as much exposure to and that's on purpose. The individual stock portion is made up of 10 individual large U.S. stocks. And our guidelines are we're going to use stocks from the MSCI USA ESG Environmental Social Governance Screened Index. The MSCI index, they screen for U.S. companies that have positive environmental social governance characteristics. They're screened for exposure to coal, oil, sands, fire, civilian firearms, nuclear weapons, tobacco, UN Global Compact, violators, other controversial industries will get screened out. I mean, you could use S&P 500 as your starting point that use within that world. I'm using a little bit more fine screened based on this environmental social governance screening. We're using the Morningstar fair market value to determine if a company is overvalued or undervalued. And we're looking for the top most undervalued companies each month as our criteria. That's what we're going to pull from. So one, it has to be in that ESG world. Two, it has to be undervalued. And then three, we're only using stocks from one stock from any single industry. So we're going to get 10 different in, different industries. If all, I don't know what financial sector is doing is undervalued, according to Morningstar, we're not picking 10 financial sectors. We're going to pick the, the most undervalued financial and then look for the next industry and pull the top 10. We do monthly rebalancing. So each fund or individual stock will move differently each 
month. And we're gonna buy the ones that have underperformed the average, that are under our, the, the spread we want, and sell the ones that have overperformed. So we're selling high, buying low. Volatility will help returns. Each month we reevaluate that CAPE index to see if the stock bond balance needs to change. It's not that's fine, we're still doing the buys and sells to rebalance. We also evaluate the individual stocks each month and we'll pick the most undervalued and swap those in. What makes it possible to do this on small accounts is that there's been a change in the industry that it's free. There's now no transaction fee in many brokerage houses to buy and sell individual stocks and ETFs. So it makes it possible for us to make small changes each month. So reporting, we will be reporting on this versus various indexes and track how we're performing. Please contact AIO Financial if you have any questions. All right, again, this is just for informational use. This isn't appropriate for everyone. Talk to your advisor if you're interested. Thank you for listening to AIO Financial. This has been brought to you by AIO Financial. If you need help with any part of your financial needs, any part of your finances, please contact AIO Financial for a free meeting, aiofinancial.com. We do have a free ebook for investing, it's at aiofinancial.com backslash investment ebook. We appreciate your comments, questions, anything you have, let me know. You can email, comment on the video, blog, podcast. Um, yeah, let us know. And if you like these videos, my podcast, please subscribe and leave a rating. It helps other people find them more easily. All right, thanks a lot.